Okay, okay, okay. So let me just cut right to the chase here. Shut on Bandit just pulled a James Charles and got itself uncancelled. Ladies and gentlemen, Shodown Bandit Chapter 2 has been announced. So for the first time in months, we have received news regarding Shodown Bandit, the Meatly side project that turned out to be an absolute train wreck and then was promptly pulled from Steam, and presumably cancelled early last year. All the social media accounts were wiped, and everything associated with the game was shut down. However, today, Shodown Bandit's Twitter was set to public again, and this image was posted, seeming to signal that Shodown Bandit is alive again. Now, a lot of people have been debating whether this n new account is real or not. Whether it's just someone who snagged the Twitter handle when Shodown Bandit's original Twitter was deactivated. Now, we can in fact verify that this account is real, as the people following the original account are still followed to this account, proving that it has been the same account all along. Okay, so now that we are pretty sure that this is in fact the original Shodown Bandit account, let's get into analyzing it. Surprisingly, there is actually quite a bit we can tell from this one image. We can be pretty certain that the bandit reaching his hand out of the coffin is not actually the same bandit from chapter 1. Firstly, because we know for a fact that there can be multiple bandits, because we did see other bandits in the early sections of Shodown Bandit. And also because the bandit that we played in chapter 1 is probably dead. It was implied from the chapter 1's ending that the hand reaching down to grab bandit belonged to King Boo Boo the Clown and the Forbidden Zone where puppets wandered into got their strings cut. And from the context in the game, it seems that you getting your strings cut takes away your soul. So then what are these things? Well, my best guess right now is that these are representations of the souls of the puppets that have been stolen by King Boo Boo. This would explain why so many of the puppets around Shodown Valley have been reported to disappear. Presumably the same thing happened to Bandit. Further evidence for this is it seems that we will be playing as Miss Undertaker in this new chapter. If you look to the right of this image, you can see that we are holding Miss Undertaker's shovel. And Miss Undertaker is the only one who had access to the coffin that Bandit was in. Now why would Miss Undertaker just randomly have a spare Bandit lying around? Well we know from the ending of the game that she was encouraging Bandit to go into the Forbidden section, presumably to confront King Boo Boo. I went and lost my skeleton key somewhere in Dead Man's Gulch. Be a dare and find it for me. Just don't take the key beyond the graveyard. So she probably kept an extra bandit to send back into the Forbidden to kill King Boo Boo. Maybe this entire chapter will center around Miss Undertaker confronting King Boo Boo herself. This would actually answer why Miss Undertaker was poking around backstage at the beginning of chapter 1. She was looking for candidates to try and kill King Boo Boo. Also, um, just one other thing I thought I should mention. I may have figured out who King Boo Boo is. This may be looking way too deep into things, but the name of the co-creator of the imaginary Shodown Bandit show is Buddy Bublik. You take the first two letters of the first and last name of Buddy Bublik, and you get Boo Boo. Again, this may just be a completely random coincidence, but knowing the Meatly, I think I may be onto something. I honestly think a lot of us in the Bendy fandom glazed over Shodown Bandit as just another excuse to make crappy OCs, when in reality there's way deeper lore here and a story that goes a lot further than any of us could have thought. Like look at all these little letters sprinkled throughout the game. Each one has its own story and adds to the lore, and a lot of them have just been completely brushed off by the community. Okay. So, I've mentioned several times that the gameplay in the original Shodown Bandit is a goddamn train wreck. No, 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 no. A train wreck isn't good enough. That game was a plane wreck. So, what can the Meatly and his team do to improve Chapter 2? Well, first off, the fact that you can't even sprint was actually the most annoying thing ever and needs to be fixed. Why can't you sprint? It makes no sense. Second, the combat in Shodown Bandit made Minecraft 1.9 look like a masterpiece. The notion of only being able to fight enemies when you're on this stupid little platform is so annoying. It's super cumbersome and honestly not fun at all to play. I get that they immediately wanted to encourage stealth gameplay, but then why did he even make the enemies killable at all? This stuffed combat system is one of the most annoying things about the game and actually made it as a whole less fun to play. 
and it seems by the super early development screenshots, they were originally going with a much more normal form of combat for their game, but it was changed last minute. Why the hell didn't they use that combat system? It would have worked so much better. Instead we got this disaster. It literally makes the game feel less like a game. It feels like a movie that you just WASD through. Oh wait, you don't WASD through it, it's point and click. Which again, is super annoying considering the type of game that it is. Point and click feels a lot better in games like Minecraft Dungeons. And does not work here at all. Honestly, looking at the game, I do feel like it would work a lot better as a dungeon crawler similar to Minecraft Dungeons. Another thing that annoyed me about this game is the fact that there's no form of progression at all. You're stuck with the same gear and weapons the entire game. There is no way to upgrade your gun, and the only ways you can change your appearance are completely cosmetic. Which is a shame because they missed a really cool opportunity with the Basker Hill sponsors. There could have been little Basker Hill shops all over the map selling better weapons which you could buy with bandit books. Yeah, remember this game had a currency that was like literally 100% useless? Even the act of getting your strings fixed is super annoying. You have to go all the way back to the nearest Doc Carver station every time you take damage. I think it would have been a lot better if he sold medkits you could use on the go. Overall, almost everything he showed on Bandit is tedious, annoying, and boring. If they're serious about Episode 2, every single one of the problems that I just mentioned needs to be addressed. So, um, thank you so much for making it to the end of the video, it honestly really does help a lot if you actually made it this far. Um, anyway, I I'm working on a Minecraft video that I put a ton of effort in, so that should either be a later today or tomorrow, I'm not quite sure yet, depends on when I finish it. And also, that'll probably be the last video of the year. So, um, Happy New Year, guys. Uh, 2020 was... It sucked, but everyone's like, OMG, 2020 is gonna be a lot better. No, it won't. It's not like you're gonna wake up on January 1st and all the problems that we had this year are gonna be gone. It's just... The end of the year is completely arbitrary. Um, I know, kind of dub, but I don't really know what else to say. I'm, I'm just... I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna go. Bye.